All right, guys, let's do this commentary for the 1859. Uh, I think for a lot of it, I'll just let it play. But then if there's a specific part that like needs more uh, attention or if I need to go frame by frame or something, then I'll stop that and um, just break it down for a little bit. But yeah, I'm pretty much just going to let it play. And I think most of the time I'll just be able to say whatever... I need to say while it's playing, but starting mm -hmm. off, we're on the Super Mario Bros. Slash Duck Hunt cartridge. Doesn't matter which version of the game you play. Waited on the title screen for a little bit there, and that's actually to manipulate, like, what random patterns you get throughout the game. Because of the way this game works with frame rules, those are f who are familiar with that, it's like... You can only beat each level so fast, and then you're always going to consistently be arriving on the next level at set intervals. So you can pretty easily manipulate, like, what frame you're arriving on each level, and you'll get the same pattern each time because of that, if you don't make any mistakes. Um, thanks for the sub, Pip, and for the bits, Radioactive Crew. 1-1, one, one, I did do flag pull glitch there. Um, I guess I'll go back. We can take a look at that in slow motion. This is basically like five frame perfect inputs. You can't actually like neatly say how many frame perfect inputs it is because it's kind of complicated, but um, if you grab the flagpole from lower than you're normally supposed to, like inside the block, the flag doesn't come down. One of the most commonly asked questions in this game is, why don't you grab the flag at the bottom? It would save time, but it doesn't actually. You'll see on a later level, like here for example, the flag came all the way down even though I hit it at the top. So, and it actually saves time to hit it at the top. But in 1-1, one, one, we do this extremely hard glitch, get inside the block and grab the flag. You can do that on every single flagpole. Saves a, a third of a second each time. So you know if I did more than just one of these, if I did the other 23 possible, you know, that would add up to a lot of seconds saved, but um, I'm pretty happy just doing one. I don't need to do like 115 more frame perfect inputs, but eventually people might get like, you know, a handful of these in a run plus everything else, but it's pretty absurd. Anyway, so yeah, we just do one one because it's a also, each flagpole, it's like a slightly different setup you usually have to do to get it to work. And 1-1 one, one is like one of the easiest ones, and it's right at the start, so it's just a good level to do it on. One, two. World one is like the hardest <laughs> world in this run, which is really unfortunate. You got the flagpole glitch. 1-2 has those pipe jumps, and there's that really tight section where you have to jump over the Koopa. It's a lot harder than it looks. And then 1-3 and 1-4, we're going to be picking up the power-ups. Um, the reason you get power-ups is not... You don't save any time killing any enemies other than Bowser. Like, Fire Flower doesn't actually save you any time except for killing Bowser. Technically, it saves you some time in 4-4 because it makes it easier and a little faster to do this certain wall clip. But yeah, we grab the mushroom so we can grab the Fire Flower in 1-4. Yo, thank you, Adept, for the sub. Um, here's how this power-up grab looks. Uh, it's, there's kind of a lot going on here, and again... Um, because of frame rules, it's like, if I went only a couple frames slower in this level, I wouldn't, like, I would have lost 0.35 seconds. In order to get the fastest time you can on this level, you have to, like, barely slip between this block and that platform. You see how tight that is? Like, his foot is, like, nearly touching it, and then his hand is, like, going through the corner of the block, like, really tight. And then really quickly jump. You kind of clip through the side of the block to grab the power up, like, as it's coming out. <laughs> <laughs> I grab it from right there and then actually hold down and right and that makes him stay facing left but move to the right and he accelerates faster behind him for whatever reason I think the reason is because they programmed the game just in a way that's like okay we have it feeling natural to speed up 
but we want to le let the player slow down faster. So I think when you hold left or, you know, behind Mario, he, he slows down faster than he speeds up for that reason. But yeah. Got a really nice grab. Mushroom grab, and then... That lets us barely save some time there. So that's where I saved 0.35 seconds versus the last world record. And then, yeah, here's a good opportunity to explain the flagpole thing. If I didn't grab the top here, I would have lost 0.35 seconds because the flag's coming down no matter what. Um, but when he, if you grab the top, see he actually stops like, he doesn't stop here. He stops a little bit above the bottom of the flagpole. And then when he jumps off, he doesn't touch the base of the flagpole. If you touch the very bottom, like spoilers, we're gonna look ahead in the run. This level, you, you can't grab the top, but see the flag still comes down all the way anyway. And then he's gonna walk on the block for just a little bit. And that little bit of walking, falling, walking is slower than him just avoiding the block and then going to the castle. So yeah, now one four. Very difficult level. We've got another fire flower, another power up grab here. This time fire flower grab. It's possible to get speed before you jump over that pit, but when I don't get the speed, then I just do Bowser without slowing down at all, which is really hard. So I got 261 on the time. Um, if you went back just like a few months ago, this is a faster 1-4 than was in the world record. People weren't, like 261s were like unheard of. If you were getting 260s, you were doing great. <laughs> and yeah, basically it's like, there's a whole lot going on, more than it looks like. So this is a huge reset point. You know, you finally got flagpole glitch, you got the 1-3 really good mushroom grab, and then you have to do this fire flower grab and kill Bowser really fast. So the way this works is like, you wanna do this thing again where you clip through the side of the block to grab the power up. Again, I hold down right, so he stays facing to the left. And then if you did it right and you like managed your speed well enough, then you'll get speed to jump across this gap. But because I didn't, uh, then I wanna land as soon as possible. See, I land right on the edge. I like very quickly react to him not getting up to speed before jumping over the gap and make sure I land right here. That way I can get on the ground, I can start running and get up to speed as soon as possible. And then when we get over to Bowser, um, Bowser takes five fireball shots. Um, you can only have two on screen at a time. So we kind of optimize the fight by hitting him with two as soon as he gets on screen, shooting two more as soon as possible. And then without slowing down, it's really hard to get the last one in, but it's barely possible to shoot him like right as you're about to run into him. His hitbox is kind of weird. He actually has two hitboxes, one for his head, which is shaped kind of like this, and then one for his body, which is shaped kind of like there. So like one and then two. And actually, if you if you like bounce a fireball up into like where his arm is, you can hit both hitboxes with one fireball and do double damage. So it's actually possible to kill Bowser with um, only three fireballs. That's the minimum number because you could do double, you could do two damage, then two damage, then one more and he has five health. That's really hard to do consistently, um, but there actually is a strat that you might see in some of my future runs, or even some of my current runs, I do it when I've lost time earlier on. Um, in like 3-4, I have a strat to kill him in four fireballs to save time, or sometimes to, to save a run that was like, uh, like 0.7 seconds behind, I did this crazy 4-4 Bowser kill. Um, but yeah. Um, even though I didn't get speed at the fire flower earlier in the level because I do this super fast kill without slowing down I'm still able to get the frame rule There is a potential way. Well, okay. I'm gonna go over all potential Ways to improve this run at the end after we watch the whole thing So you could go one frame rule faster in this level, but it's it's kind of unviable. I Don't know how consistently you could get it but it is possible. Why does it appear Goomba at the end? So, the lore of this game is that 
the Koopas. They're like a tribe of evil turtles that use black magic. It's in the manual. It's... <laughs> that is the lore. And so they've transformed themselves into fake Bowsers. They're all imposters until the last one. Oh, and I didn't even explain like why fire saves time. <laughs> so you want to you want to get the fire flower to kill Bowser, and that's because then you normally you know when you you touch this X, the bridge goes and then Bowser down into the lava. Right, amazing sound effects. Uh, that takes like two and a half seconds. So each time you kill Bowser, I mean it depends on how fast you kill him, but you pretty much save like. 2.45 seconds if you get an optimal Bowser fight on every one of these worlds. Um, you're gonna end up taking a few seconds to collect the power-ups, but then on every single castle, you're gonna save like two plus seconds. And so total that, that adds up to, you know, like close to 10 seconds that you save by getting the Fire Flower. And we already kind of watched 2-1. It's mostly just simple, like, fireballing enemies. Um, I know some parts like this might look like, wow, how could you possibly get past this part without the fire flower? But you can do kind of like I did in 1-2, you can land on the edges of these pipes. It's a lot harder, but I do have the fastest small Mario only run as well. That's a 1912. And yeah, it does like all of those pipe jumps and stuff. Right here, you might see I bonk into the spring and it's like, oh, well you could improve that part. Or maybe like, how about you just completely avoid the spring altogether, like clip through the wall, do a wall jump right here up top, and that is faster, you're right. But if you look right here, the clock, the timer says 346. If you get a if a time ending in a one, three, or six, then you'll get one, three, or six fireworks. Um, and so if you go any faster in this level, you're just gonna get 346 and get six fireworks. So yes, you can beat that level faster but you're gonna get six fireworks and end up being slower. Even a task can't get a 347 in that level. Water levels? Everyone's always hating on water levels in video games. I do admit casually they're not that great, but in this game, in this speedrun, I really like water levels because like I said, it's pretty easy to manipulate um, to manipulate uh, enemy patterns and like most of the random stuff in this game. And that's actually why I'm not really using fireballs to kill a lot of these enemies. Because if you do, then you're more likely to get like some random patterns that you're not ready for. So you'll see in the water levels, I pretty much don't fireball that many enemies just to try and keep things consistent. But Overall, water levels have the most enemies that can be in like random places and stuff. So those levels for me, like at a high level, those are the most fun levels for me because they're they're like less stale, I guess. They always have more patterns that you've never seen before. Oh, video's getting a little jumpy, hello? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I get a little close to this cheap cheap over here, but a crouch jump, you can avoid it. Pretty much every pattern you can get with these cheap cheaps. Um, come on, video. We gotta like let it buffer a little bit or what's going on? I don't know the deal, but anyway, um, pretty much any pattern you get with the cheap cheaps, you can, you can avoid it. You don't really have to slow down. There's a way to get around them. And this is a good level to do Flag Puglitch on, just because of the way the Flag Puglitch setup works. So in the future, Flag Puglitch will probably be done on this level to save time. I already would do it on this level in attempts if I didn't save the 1-3 frame rule by getting the... If I got like a slightly slower mushroom grab in that level, then I would opt to go for a faster frame rule, or a Flag Puglitch here to save a frame rule. At the beginning of the beginning of here, you're gonna see kind of a weird thing happening. Oh my gosh, this is really annoying. I've never seen this before. I don't know why it's like. I'm just gonna reopen it. It's like, it's like jittering and stuff. 
Um, something weird's gonna happen at the beginning of this level. He, like, his animation freezes. He just, like, slides on one foot. If you hold A and B, see he jumps and shoots a fireball right at the start of the level. For whatever reason, that makes him, his animation just freeze and he, like, slides along the ground. So, kind of weird. Also, I've done so many of these commentary videos and I've never seen it just, like, freeze and stutter like this. So, that's really annoying. <laughs> but... We're just going to watch everything in slow motion. Everything's slow motion worthy. Um, not really, but the reason I do that is because... Not just to do that cool little sliding animation, but because it delays a consistent number of frames at the start of this level to manipulate Bowser's pattern. So we get the shots in there. Um, I do lose a little bit of time, like, bumping into this platform. Hey, thanks, Abutu. Um, that's basically like, like, okay, you, you see, you come in to, to Bowser, and you have to jump to shoot him, because he's in the air. Otherwise, you're going to have to let him land on the ground, and you don't want to wait for him to land to be able to shoot the four shots you need to kill him. So, you jump and shoot him, and you saw I did the 1-4 fight kind of differently. That's because there weren't these blocks here. Or, there was a platform, but these blocks weren't here, so I could jump earlier and shoot fireballs on the way in. I can't really do that here, because of the blocks. And that's that's how most of the Bowser, like, arena areas are after World 1. There's just, like, not space to, um, do quite the same type of Bowser fight as in 1-4. So, bonk into the platform for, like, the minimum amount of time possible, basically. And if you grab this X at like a pretty high 261, you get the frame rule that I typically shoot for. Otherwise, you're gonna need a high 262. And this is where I was talking about where in order to get that, I pretty much need to do a strat where I kill him in less than five fireballs. And I do have a strat where you slow down slightly. And then like, as he's like here-ish, I shoot some fireballs from back here and they bounce up in into him and do double damage and kill him. And then you barely save another frame rule over this, which means 0.35 seconds. Um, man, what is the deal? Skipping around. Hang on. Hang on. We're trying something out. Maybe it'll work better now. I don't know. I hope so. I'm not even like... This is really annoying. Like, this is a problem. Uh, I don't know how to fix it. I'm just gonna like restart virtual dub. <laughs> Don't know any other solution without turning it off and back on again. All right, the age old solution to everything. Just turn it off and on again. We did it, folks. At least I hope. Oh no, I jinxed it. Amazing. Well, sorry, it's really annoying. If you want to watch the full, <laughs> like, not jittery version, that's available, so feel free, I guess. But we'll mostly be break, I guess, I guess because this is being so stupid, we can mostly just touch on the more particular parts that need to be taken slowly. I don't know. This is really stupid. I've never done this before, I don't know why. I don't understand. What is the problem? Well, this is... We had issues with the video yesterday, but this is like the one that was fixed and shouldn't have the problem. Well, 
We're like halfway into this. I don't wanna like start over and re-explain everything, you know? I feel like it needs to just like buffer the entire rest of the run. But <laughs> that's really annoying. Um, maybe we can pause it for a little bit and see if there's anything I can ex explain while it's paused. <laughs> this is a train wreck. Blame, blame technology. I don't know. It's not my fault. Okay, so 3-3, three, three, there's not really anything to talk about. 3-4... Main things of interest are the Podoboos. They jump at random heights, but like most random things, I know what they're gonna do. Just gotta watch everything in slow motion, I guess. This is less annoying, I assume. It's just gonna take forever to get through it all. Um, so yeah, I know where the Podoboos are gonna be. I know Bowser's gonna jump forwards. You actually, so you can see his hitbox here. Like, it's kind of strange. You actually don't need to crouch until pretty late. And then, yeah, even though I'm already past him, I want to turn around and shoot him with three fireballs so he dies. See how weird the axe is? Like, you have to grab it from above. I'm not grabbing it right here until right there. Like, you can't grab the side of it until you move past the top. Makes it really hard to grab the axe. But yep. 4-1 has nothing of interest. Okay, you just run through it. <laughs> Same with 4-2. <laughs> Man, this tech problem is like ruining the whole thing because I want to just like skip the parts that aren't interesting or like that I don't have a reason to watch in slow motion. Something interesting did actually happen in 4-1, though. Shoot the Buzzy Beetle, because you have to. Uh, let's go back. Right here... You can hear in the video I say I did the... Lapitu... Sound glitch or something. Spiny kill sound glitch. It only made the sound... It didn't make the sound of me fireballing the spiny. Because I... I hit the spiny somehow. Good hitboxes in this video game. Look at that fireball. It's not killing the spiny. 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 There we go. Now we hit the spiny. <laughs> sure. <laughs> uh, but this is the same frame that I stomp on the Lakitu. You can see the points appear for killing him. And so it only... It only made the sound effect for me killing the spiny. Or the Lakitu. <laughs> Man, the jitters. They're so frustrating. I don't know why it's like this. It's never... I've never seen this before. Classic speedrunning phrase. I've never seen that before. 4-3 is an interesting level. It's There's some pretty hard platforming in it, but you, you aren't allowed to slow down any frames at all, basically, because the frame rule is super tight, and without a very strange thing happening at the flagpole, you actually wouldn't be able to get this frame rule at all. And that is, right here, um... You have to look really closely, but Mario stopped a pixel higher than he does. Like, when he slides, this is another one of those levels, one of the two levels, like 3-3, where you can't grab the top of the flagpole. In order to do that, you'd have to wait for this platform right here to get to go back up, and that's way slow. So you grab lower, and when you do that, Mario will either stop one pixel above the brown block, or he'll be touching the brown block. And you want him to be one pixel up, because like I said, the higher he stops above that block, the faster he's going to get over to the castle. And uh, this is just kind of like a sub-pixel thing. Like, I don't know. I don't even know what to tell you. It's just depending on where you grab the flagpole and like, 
video game calculations, it'll <laughs> stop a pixel higher. So the way I do that, there's a two frame window. You can hit, you can jump at multiple frame windows, but like here, I jump like near the edge of the platform. Like when, pretty much when he's over like the second circle from the end, but it's a two frame window. So I think you can jump this frame or this frame and then it works. Then you barely save the frame rule. If you, if you don't, like if he goes one pixel lower on the flag, then you lose the frame rule. <laughs> You just lose 0.35 out of nowhere. 4-4. Um, one could argue this to be one of the hardest levels in the run. That's because we have this clip right here. I'm just gonna let it all play out and then I'll... That fire bar is actually one of the hardest parts. I mean, it's like it's just so easy to mess up. And then the Bowser kill. Okay, this is one of the few clips in the whole run. And... This is nice um, to be Big Mario here. This clip would not be so fun as Small Mario, but it's really, well, it's not easy as Big Mario, it's just like way simpler. So, if you've ever seen any any percent runs of this game, once you're inside a wall, you can keep running. Like if you've seen 1-2 clip or 4-2 clip, you get in the wall and then you just keep running in the wall. The way this clip works is, um, you, you'll see Mario, he hits right between, like this is a block right here, and then this is a block right here. He hits right between them, right? So he actually stands up right there. That's how wall jumps work in this game, is there's two, there's a spot where two blocks meet, you hit the pixel right where they meet, and you stand there for one frame. Well, that's enough right here to make him stand up, and because I was crouching before, now he stands up, his head enters this block, and now it's like I'm in the wall. Even though this isn't really a wall, it's just like there's a wall and then there's a block here. It's not like a continuous wall. Um, Mario's head is in the wall. So basically the game thinks I'm in the wall and I can just keep running it as though I'm are like fully inside a wall. And then... Weird. I've actually never thought about this. Huh. I feel like I should bump into this wall right here because his head is out of the wall and then re-enters the wall. But I don't actually know. Anyway, yeah, we get some slick moonwalk action. <laughs> and then... <laughs> Yeah, so that clip, it might look like it saves a lot of time. Um, it actually doesn't save that much. You, you have to take the right path through this level to complete it. So you, you normally you go up and then around and down through here. If you go any other way, the level will loop back to earlier in the level. And going up and around actually is only like half a second slower. Um, come over here crouch under this fire bar. The edges of fire bars don't actually have a hitbox. The hitbox starts like, I don't know, like there or something. I don't, I don't actually know where it is, but you can go through the tips of them. And it's so easy to stand up too early or something like that and get hit. And then this Bowser fight's really hard because there's there's this fireball and this potaboo just ready to block your shot, your opening shots you're trying to get on Bowser. I feel like it's more rare than common to actually hit Bowser with some of the opening shots. Um, if you're arriving here at any random time, but like I am arriving here at a specific frame rule to manipulate Bowser's pattern so that he jumps backwards. The reason I want him to jump backwards is so that I can jump at him and just like fire away while still making uh, progress like towards the X. If he were, he basically can do three patterns. He can jump, he can jump forwards and that's the patterns where you'll see me run under him like he did in 3-4. He can jump backwards, but then about right here, he just changes directions. Obviously that would be bad because th that's like right where I want to be. He'd be coming back towards me right now and hit me. Or he jumps like fully backwards and keeps going backwards. So this is actually kind of a slow kill. I didn't get the opening shots. And then I was like, not as aggressive as I could be. 
if you go like all out and you like shoot fireballs perfectly at him, then you can kill him and save one frame rule faster than this. Even needing to get five shots in, but especially if you get, uh, if your opening shots don't get blocked like this. Like if you get two opening shots on him, you just jump, fire three, and easily save another frame rule over this. But um, I do want to point out, like, this is a very straightforward game, but there are so many things going on that you probably wouldn't realize. Look at the way my fireballs hit him. Like, you can see how weird his hitbox is. This fireball is exploding, like, without even touching him. That fireball hit, like, the top of his head. This fireball hit, like, the top left, like, it's not even touching him. And then this fireball right here, you're like, okay, that's probably gonna touch him, like, a couple frames from now. Nope, it flies like, oh. Okay, so <laughs> I thought it did. Normally, you get one that looks like this, and then it actually doesn't hit him. It like goes under him until he lands on it like way back here. But he actually doesn't die from this fireball. You might think like, oh, this fireball's touching him this frame. It actually hits him this frame, and so does this one. So like, <laughs> You see this fireball right here that I'm just now shooting? That hits Bowser, like the next frame. Like you see how disjointed his hitbox is in front of him? It makes it really hard to fight him. And a lot of times when you're jumping up to shoot the fireball, you'll like barely shoot it over his head and so it doesn't hit him till like way back here. And because you can only have two out on screen at a time, and like I barely have time to shoot five fireballs in, like you see how close I'm getting to him plus realize that his hitbox sticks out like this far. So I'm like a pixel away from hitting him right here. Um, if your fireball hits him just like barely late, then you're not gonna have time to get all the shots in and kill him. So that's like very like intricate stuff going on that you just have no idea if you're watching at surface level. Sorry if that was just like a very long tangent about technical details you don't care about, but that's like, that's like what's going on beneath the surface in this game all the time, stuff like that. Maybe we took long enough to explain that, that the video will be nice and smooth now and not choppy. Yeah, that's, that's like... Even if you know a lot about any percent in this game, that's something you don't get. You don't get those Bowser fights and like shooting fireballs and stuff. And there's a lot of new territory to explore. Five, two, start to see some hammer bros. Hammer bros and a lot of enemies actually don't get harder until after five, two. There's like a flag in the game that turns on after five, two and makes the game harder. So that's kind of interesting. Um, right here, it looks like I should run into this block, but I actually crouch right there and slide off the edge of it. And that keeps my crouching hitbox until I land on the ground again. So I'm actually like crouching in the air, but you just, it just doesn't have the animation for it. So his head goes through the block. Yo, CFG, huge raid. Thank you, I saw you were doing your charity marathon thing. So thanks so much for sending everyone here. Right now we're doing a commentary video for my 1859 that I just got. The first ever sub-19 in this game. Just breaking down some of the technical details. So I'm just gonna keep rolling on this because I want to highlight it to throw it on YouTube later. But yeah, hey everyone who showed up, hope you enjoy. And thanks CFG for the raid again. But yeah, that's why I didn't run into that block there. And then there's so many jumps in this run. You just don't even know. Like you have to jump off the very edge of this block and then you barely make it onto this block. And yeah, there are some different routes you could take. You could jump onto the earlier step or other things, but just like constantly throughout this game, you don't realize like how many jumps are really close. And if you tried to just pick up the game for yourself and copy what you see, it's a lot harder than, like even the very simple looking things are a lot harder to mimic than they look. This level, the bullet bills are pretty tough to deal with, especially if you're just beginning, but 
not too hard at my level, especially because I know what patterns I'm getting because of the frame rules and stuff. I just did want to point out that the way this game checks to see if you're landing on an enemy is just if Mario's moving downwards. Like, if your hitboxes collide, like, any part of your hitboxes touch, and Mario's moving downwards, Mario wins. Unless it's, like, a Spiny or Bowser or something, right? So Mario's moving downwards here, even though it's, like, he stomps on this Koopa with his face, and, like, you still bounce off of it. <laughs> Same thing happened with the Bullet Bill earlier, actually, I think. It was, like, right over here. Yeah, so I don't land on top of this Bullet Bill. I, like, punch it. <laughs> but we still get the bounce. Mario still wins. Uh, and you're gonna see the thing again right here where Mario just like slides on one foot. Again, that happens because I buffer jump and fireball at the start of the level. It doesn't save time, and I don't do it just because it looks cool, but I do it to manipulate Bowser at the end here. Pretty much the same thing going on as the 2-4 Bowser fight. I mean, 5-4 is like a repeat of 2-4, but with more fire bars. And this fire bar right here, very tight jump. You can see how close I get to this fire bar, like before jumping. And then I also like do a small jump. Like it's hard to do a jump where Mario doesn't hit the ceiling and bounce back downwards. And that's what I do. Cause if I did there, he probably would have bounced down sooner and then hit the fire bar. And just in general, this is one of the most important levels. The whole reason I like wait on the title screen for several seconds it, to manipulate patterns, this level, like these fire bars can just be, like this one could be in your way. Um, this one could be in your way. This one over here could be like straight down, right in your way. This one can be in your way. So gotta get here at like a specific number of frames from power on <laughs> so that you can guarantee the fire bars will get out of your way and you don't lose a bunch of time. So, 4-4, like I said, it's one of the hardest levels. Now we're past world 5, and at this point, it's where, again, I just kill the enemy because I'm moving downwards. But, world 6, like, the run's getting pretty serious. 6-1, pretty easy level. Just, like, straightforward platforming, mostly. But 6-2... A lot more complicated, especially if you're small Mario. Um, most level, like a lot of Mario levels now are themed, and this game doesn't really have like themed levels. It was the first Mario game, they could do whatever they wanted, right? But this level is definitely themed. Um, there's just so many Piranha Plants, they just threw so many pipes in here. And it's... A piranha plant is actually supposed to spawn in every one of these pipes. If you see an empty pipe, that's just because, like, the game's sprite limit is exceeded, right? You see two empty pipes right here. There should be two piranha plants in there, but the game can't handle all the sprites, so it just despawns them. And I do, um, slow down a little bit on the stairs there. That's, like, completely on purpose. I don't want to go too fast, because if I were to finish with 343 on the timer, then I'd get three fireworks. I'd lose like a second compared to slowing down enough to get 342. And no, I did get a firework in 6-1. Good pointing that out, but just getting one firework doesn't waste any time. There's no situation where like, oh, you need to slow down to avoid this one firework. No, that would waste time itself. 6-3. Um, same thing as 6-2, actually. Right here, I do that jump a little bit slow, and that's so we don't get 256 on the clock. If I were to get the, the 6, then I'd get 6 fireworks, and that's bad. Although, you actually can save time in this level, and I did, I did, if you watch the video, I lose time on the splits compared to my PB before this. That's because, let's see, it changes to a 5 right here, so, huh, I was actually, like, pretty far away from it. Although intentionally, like I didn't want to, I wasn't trying to save this frame rule, but. So I grabbed the flagpole like 18 or 19 frames or something after it changed from six to five. If you grab the flagpole, like the frame, it changes from six to five. Like right here, like there, I'm grabbing the flagpole. Then you save a frame rule, 0.35 seconds. 
Um, and the reason that's hard is not because it's hard to beat the level fast enough to do that. Like, I intentionally waste time so that I don't get anywhere near a 6. The reason that's hard to do is just because it has to be, like, right then. If you grab it, like, a little bit after it changes to a 5, you don't save the time. And if you change it, if you grab it before it changes to a, a 5, you get 6 fireworks. You lose, like, a few seconds and your run's over. So, this is where I'll be one of the levels I'll be saving time next. There's actually a strategy that was found by King Parody um, where you actually just like walk. You don't fully run at the start of the level until right here at the edge of the castle. Then you start holding B. And that will consistently get you the frame rule. Like you'll grab the flag on like the perfect frame. The problem is you have to play the rest of the level after that without slowing down. So in order to do that, like there's no way to get past this part without slowing down, except a jump from like right there, and you fly through the air, barely dodge this platform, and then barely land on the edge of this platform. It's really tight. I want to say it's like a two frame jump, and you have to do a duck jump. So like crouch, like only hold down, push A, and then start holding right again, like right after you leave the ground. And all within like a two frame window. So yeah, really precise jump, but if you pull that off, you can save time over the world record. And we'll be we'll be going for that soon to get the 1858. But yeah. 6-4. There's those two potaboos. Normally they're a huge problem, but because I know what patterns I'm gonna get, because I've played like flawlessly, <laughs> I know what pattern I'll get. And I don't have to worry about them. This is like the coolest Bowser kill in the whole run, pretty much. Um <laughs> I do slow down a little bit on this fire bar block. Like, you could do a faster jump by here, but I actually intentionally waste a few frames there just because I've like labbed out that on this frame rule, see how Bowser threw five hammers? That's actually a pretty small number of hammers for him to throw. Normally he throws like six, seven, eight hammers. And you do see like these weird glitchy frames. You see the HUD up at the top, it's like freaking out. Those are lag frames. For whatever reason, when this game lags, that happens. And I don't know why, but um, I like intentionally do that fire bars hallway a little slow, because then that makes him only throw five hammers. And then I get less lag. Even though I got two frames, I still that's still a lot less than I normally get. And let's see. Again, Bowser has five health, so we hit him with one, two fireballs right when he shows up barely clear the potaboo. I shoot these fireballs as late as possible to minimize lag. I could have shot them a little bit later, but yeah. Three, four, and then the last shot comes right there. <laughs> right before I run into him. <laughs> so that's pretty crazy. I don't know exactly if it's frame perfect shot, but it's close to that if it's not. And there we go. Really good Bowser kill. Was this task or an actual run? This is the RTA world record that I got last night. First ever sub 19 minute run. We got an 1859.85. This level is a nightmare as small Mario because of those hammer bros. Like have fun dealing with those as small Mario. This level, same thing I was talking about in um, 6-2. I almost get a three on the clock, but I intentionally slowed down on the stairs earlier so that I wouldn't get a three and I would get a two. I, I think I even, um, let's back it up just a little bit more. Yeah, you see this little, little turnaround on the stairs? That's just to make sure that I don't get the three. And because of frame rules, it's like, it's not like, oh, you could have grabbed it like a couple frames faster and still not gotten a three. Like, no, there's, there's no time to save thing. I got the best frame rule you can get unless you were to do flying pull glitch in some form. That is the buzzy beetle that cost me $200. <laughs> I got hit by it in this championship race thing. Yikes. 7-2, again, a repeat level. It's the same thing as 2-2 except there's a lot more enemies. Some patterns can be super tricky in this level. 
but I, yeah. I've been on this pace lots of times. I know exactly what the enemies are gonna do. This blooper can get really scary at the end. Sometimes he gets closer than that, but he w he held off a little bit that time. <laughs> he was like, now go ahead, you got this. I'm not gonna interfere this time. 7-3, just like 2-2 two, two was a repeat of, 7-2 is a repeat of 2-2, two, 7-3 two. is a repeat of 2-3. But again, now with more enemies. <laughs> But yeah, you can you can just run and there's no pattern you can get here where you are forced to slow down in order to avoid them. What does shooting the Buzzy Beetle and 4 2 do? It's just funny because he doesn't die and it doesn't make a sound. That's all. <laughs> well, it does make a sound technically. I started doing it in All Stars because it made a sound like you kill him, but it doesn't kill him. All-Stars version is weird. This is another maze level. You have to take the right path through um, to make the level not loop. This part is like, this is some tough platforming, especially as, as Big Mario. Every single one of these duck jumps, like you can't be holding down and right on the D-pad. You have to be holding only, only down when you um, push jump. So here I'm holding only down, I push jump, and then I start holding right again and like barely slip through here without hitting any of the walls. And then there's like a bunch more. These are like really short duck jumps. <laughs> Pretty tight um, platforming section to navigate. Get the opening shots. I think one missed this run. Yeah, it went under him, but that's okay. And we got one lag frame in there, but... You can do a really nutty Bowser kill. You can save a frame rule over all of these Bowsers except 6-4. Like every one of the castle levels in this run, you can save 0.35 except 6-4, because I did a really good kill there. You would like jump over the Podaboo, or no, not on this one. You have to get both opening shots to hit, and then you jump and shoot two, but you do a much lower jump without slowing down, and then you do the final shot like right next to him. And the frame rule is so tight in this level that you have to do all that, plus not lose any frames while doing the duck jumps earlier. Plus, I mean, maybe you can lose like one frame, but you need really good duck jumps. And then you have to grab the ax. See, you can grab the ax right here. I ended up grabbing the ax like one, two, three frames late. So it's really hard to get that frame rule, but that is a place you could save time in the future as well. And then World 8. World 8 should be the hardest world, casually or as Small Mario. It, it probably is. But with Fire Flower, it's so much easier. <laughs> Normally you have to do some really hard duck jumps. There's a lot of people that probably don't actually know, but normally three Goombas spawn right there. But I hit both of these Koopas right here. That like keeps them on screen and like in memory. So it only is able to load two Goombas right here. That just makes it a lot easier to, to get over this wall. Hitting that star block is actually important. <laughs> I'll explain why in a second. What is small fire Mario used for? Yeah, there's a glitch where you can be small Mario and fire Mario. The benefit is that you're small, so it's easier to avoid enemies, and you have firepower, so you can shoot enemies out of your way. But it takes like five seconds to set it up, so you're not going to see that in a world record. People do that in races all the time, though. It's like the it's the best power up you can have, best of both worlds. Okay, so we hit we want to hit this star block. You might have heard of bad judges in any percent runs. Those actually don't exist in Warpless. As long as you hit this star block. Like, you can hit anywhere on the block, and you will get the the benefits of hitting the star block. And what are those benefits? It's kind of complicated, but for whatever reason, um, the star in that power-up block and the flag at the end of this level, 
They have they share some memory values, specifically the Y subpixel. And when the star earlier in the level, um, when it despawns, that Y subpixel position just stays in memory. And then when you get to the flag, like it, it still has that. It still thinks its Y subpixel should be that. So when you touch the flag, you can actually see it. Instantly, the flag like moves down a pixel. You see that? Like normally Mario and the flag, they're moving down at the same rate. But you can see the very first frame I touch the flag, it like jumps down. And that's because I hit the, the star block. So it saves one frame to hit that star block because it moves the flag down one pixel. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you can actually see that. Huh. The flag stops and then Mario keeps going. Weird. Huh. I never knew that Mario keeps going after the flag. Why does it save a frame then? <laughs> I don't even know. Maybe the flag normally finishes like two frames later or something. I don't know. But anyway, that one frame actually makes all the difference in this level. The, uh, the frame rule is so tight that even with that one frame saved by hitting the star block, I barely get the frame rule. If I were to waste one frame slowing down in that level, I'd lose 0.35 seconds. Or, or not losing any frames running through the level and not hitting the star block, you'd also lose 0.35. Thanks, EasyScape, for the sub. All right, guys, three more levels left. Really tight duck jump on the stairs right there. Like, stuff like that, you don't even realize how hard it is. And then this jump right here. That jump right there. This is like, you have to have really good control of Mario because if you just like analyze this situation right now, it's like, okay, you're probably not gonna jump right here and not bonk into the pipe, right? And you're right. Unless you slow down a little bit, which is what I do. I slow down just enough to avoid the pipe. And then I actually get back up to full speed immediately, like while still in the air. Like as soon as I cross, I get above the pipe, I'm already speeding back up to full speed. And the, this game's speed mechanics are kind of weird. Like Mario runs at, his, his running speed is 40, his walking speed is 24, okay? You can slow down midair, like anywhere in between those two values and then speed back up. But if you slow down so much that you hit 24 speed, you cannot speed back up midair anymore. You're just like stuck at walking speed. So right here, you have to slow down, but not too much. It has to be enough that you don't hit the pipe, but not so much that you can't speed back up immediately. So it's like really fine balance and just like really good uh, like mastery of Mario's mechanics in this game going on right there. We get some fireballs to shoot the Koopas out of the way. Again, stomp the Koopa with our face because we just have to be moving downwards to bounce off enemies. <laughs> I guess I kind of land on top of that one. Sometimes he's up higher and you like barely touch him, but that lets you get on the step and on your way. Only two more levels. Um, we have this game like so figured out at this point that even now I'm like, almost 18 minutes into a speed run. And I know exactly what frame I've arrived in this level. I know exactly what patterns these enemies are gonna give. The hammer bros can be all sorts of different places. They can chuck their hammers at all random times, but I know those are gonna be on the bottom. And I like specifically don't fireball these two because the next two would give me like a hard to deal with pattern if I did. And then one final spot in the game where you want to slow down to avoid getting fireworks. So this is an intentional bonk into the stairs right here. And that slows me down enough that we don't grab the flag while it says 243. Because again, that would make three fireworks go off. What levels will I work on to get 1858? I'm going to go over that right after we finish watching 84. Go over all the possible improvements and like what my plans are and stuff. Okay. So, 8-4, we've gotten all the way here, but unfortunately, this is like the hardest level in the game. 
especially this room. The next room's also really hard. The room after that's also pretty hard. And then you have Bowser at the end, who's really random and actually hit me three times when I should have gotten sub-19. This was my, not not my fourth run to 8-4. This was my 13th run to 8-4 on sub-19 pace. <laughs> but I made it to Bowser three times before this, and Bowser hit me with his hammers. Even though it, you probably have a, like a 75% chance of getting a good Bowser pattern that you don't get hit on, I got so unlucky three times that I got hit before finally he let me pass. And this time, the 8-4 was crazy. The others were just like clean 8-4s, not this one. Not this one because I bonk into the pipe right there. Oh man, what a silly sloppy mistake, right? Just, I must have been so nervous that I just was jittery, I just didn't jump at the right time. No, 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 no. This jump is frame perfect, okay? You have to jump right there or else you're bonking the pipe. You can't jump right there. No, 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 you gotta be jumping on this frame, not that one, <laughs> okay? So see how Mario's foot clips the pipe, like pretty much just barely. If I jumped a frame earlier, if I hit A right here instead of right here, we would have not bonked the pipe. So that's the strat I go for. 18 minutes and like, 12 seconds, however long you are into the run. I go for that frame perfect jump, but that's not the only frame perfect jump in this room. We gotta come over here and at the spot where two of the blocks that make up the pipe meet, we gotta hit the wall jump pixel. <laughs> Anytime you run into a wall in this game, you're pretty much going to enter the wall for one frame at least before the game's able to shove you back out. And if you enter the wall on the exact pixel where he's standing on top of the block that like makes up the wall. Like you can see there's like this block on the bottom, then there's this block that builds the pipe, like one more block and then the top block. So there's four blocks going on right here and I'm hitting like right in the middle of the four. Specifically the middle of these two that are in the middle of the four. Anyway, um, if you push jump on that one frame that Mario is standing there, you can jump off of it. So that is a pixel perfect, frame perfect trick. And I'm hitting that pixel after turning Mario around because Mario accelerates faster backwards. We kind of talked about that earlier. And you want to do that so that he accelerates faster to get in the pipe. Only saves like five frames or something. Saves like a solid 0.1 second. But hey, without that, <laughs> we actually probably wouldn't have gotten the sub 19. And, um, Man, that wall jump is way harder to hit if you mess this up. Like the main reason, you could slow down slightly and not make this jump frame perfect, but if you do that, Mario's like sub pixels get, they get shifted and like his exact positioning <laughs> when you, when you get down to the nitty gritty, like exactly where Mario is located in like the games, RAM addresses right now is like slightly different and that makes the wall jump harder, but I still managed to hit it um, Yeah, kind of complicated, but basically if you do the frame perfect jump it, it makes wall jump easier. I missed it, but I still got wall jump luckily But here we are. I know that I have bonked into the wall I can I'm like barely on sub 19 pace here when I say barely I do mean I'm on like but entering 8.4, I'm on like 1859.5 pace at best. Like if I get a clean 8.4, we're getting 1859.5. But I'm like, shoot, I bonked into the wall. I clutched the wall jump even so. I got to make up some time. So, like I said, Mario accelerates faster backwards. And there's this thing you can do where you, you, you can't actually get up to full speed by just running on this pipe. You'd have to walk a little bit, jump up onto this ledge, and then get up to running speed. But we do a turnaround, a jump, and a little small jump so that we can land back on the pipe, turn around, and jump off of it at full speed. So that's called a fast acceleration. And there's like a lot of inputs going on there in a very small amount of time. But that saved me probably three or four frames or something. I don't know. <laughs> but that actually turned out to be really important, and I'll explain why in in a couple rooms from now. Um, 
right here, we do another backwards jump. And this looks kind of weird if you don't know what's going on. We turn around and go in this pipe. And that takes us to this, this water room here. That's not where this pipe is supposed to send you. Like if you're just playing this game, if you played it growing up, you probably know if you know this game very well, there's a pipe after this lava pit, you're supposed to go in that one. That's the pipe that leads you to the water section. But we got all the ZFG viewers in here. This is SMB1's form of wrong warp, okay? We wrong warp to this water section, insane. This is like me pulling off the 1080 at the end of the run. I know, it's insane. <laughs> but all you actually have to do is scroll the screen far enough. Um, and the game only has like one memory address to keep track of where pipes or like loading zones should send you. And it uses the screen's position to do that. And because there's two pipes really close together at this point, um, if you scroll the screen to right here, you can see on the right side, this is my visual cue. Um, right here, you guys can see my mouse, right? It, there's kind of these lines that are barely visible. Like if they're not visible now, now they're visible. Just this part of the bricks. If you can see that at all, that's the first pixel that the wrong warp will work on. So if I, if I enter the pipe right here, this pipe's sending me back to the beginning of the level. If I enter it right now, it's sending me to the water room. And I managed to get a really good turnaround room. I only scrolled it one pixel farther than necessary. As you can imagine, this is pretty risky at the end of an 18 minute, like I'm 18 minutes and 30 seconds into a world record pace run. And I only scroll the screen one pixel farther than necessary. <laughs> because again, I'm trying to make up time. I bonked in the previous room. If I scrolled the screen two pixels less, like the run's over. Um, so yeah. Does, this is just a really crazy room. We clutch this backwards wall jump after messing up our sub-pixels, and then we do this really good fast acceleration, which the visual cue is harder as Big Mario, and then we get a really good turnaround that's almost perfect. <laughs> and at this point, I'm like, okay, okay, okay. We might be going fast enough now to still get sub-19. So my heart's pounding. We gotta swim through the water section properly. Here, I barely touch down barely touched down. And what that does is makes Mario's head go right through the ceiling now. You see how he doesn't actually bounce off the ceiling until right there? We come up here, his head's not bouncing on the ceiling. That's because I did something called crouch swimming or duck swimming. It's the same thing I did in 5-2 where I crouched off the edge of that pipe and then his head went right through the block. Um, you can crouch. I actually tried to do it right here, but I swam too early and didn't get it. <laughs> so then I did it right there. Barely activate it. I actually hit down and swim on the same frame so you actually don't see him crouch, but you'll see it in a second here. That activates duck swimming so my head doesn't have a hitbox now. That lets me swim right through this fire bar. That's why it doesn't hit me. It's not because the game's hitboxes are that bad, although sometimes they are. They're not that bad. <laughs> um, only the bottom half of me has a hitbox right now. So yeah, that's, that's pretty absurd looking. <laughs> but I keep holding down here. So if Mario happens to touch down, which he did, uh, he just crouches and then I swim again and we're still crouch swimming. That's important so that we can go right through this fire bar again. And then we swim right in here. And I'll just play that whole water section for you so you can see it all seamlessly. So we're big Mario, but now we're crouching Mario. That lets our that lets us swim right through that fire bar. It lets us swim through that fire bar. And sometimes this this fire bar it, this time it was like over here, but sometimes it's like right here and you swim through that one as well. So <laughs> yeah, it looks pretty silly. It I don't blame people for being like, what the heck, you're cheating, because that part looks pretty suspicious. It's like, you go right through it, and it's, yeah, I do, but that's how the game works. Final room. This is my fourth time on sub-19 pace getting to this room. I hope the Bowser lets me pass. And he does. We did it. We got, and at this point I didn't even know. I stopped the timer. It said 1859.92, and I was like, 
Maybe I stopped it a little early. Maybe I didn't start it on time. Who knows? Is it sub-19? I don't know. And it turns out that it was. And we actually know, like, the exact time of this run, 1859.856, because we can look at this pattern that Bowser does. See how the, the hammers are arranged in, like, a very clear array of hammers right there. And every frame that you arrive in the last room, he gives you a different pattern. Um, right down to the direction he jumps, the height of the fireball that he shoots beforehand, the height that this potaboo jumps, whether this hammer bro throws a hammer or not, all of those can indicate what frame you entered the last room. Um, so we know my exact time. Like you can, you can replicate this run on an emulator, you can finish, you can enter the room on this frame and get this exact pattern. So we know the exact time of this run. Pretty cool. Um, although, yeah, you do you do have to look and see, okay, I got, like, lag frames aren't going to change the patterns, so you do have to look and see, in 6.4 I got two lag frames, and then in 7.4 I got one lag frame. So take this pattern, whatever time that would give you, add three frames, and that's my time. And yeah, we came scarily close to this potaboo. But just an hour before this run, I actually got a different run on this exact same pace, pretty much. But th I think that run was three frames slower. That run was three frames slower than this run. And it made me get a different pattern that on Bowser, and I got hit by a hammer. And you lose, like, one second taking damage to Bowser. Like, you don't die. You just, like, shrink back to small Mario. And then when you hit the X, it's, like, a full second later. I wouldn't... I didn't get 1859.8. I got... 19 flat point eight. So man that happened to me three times before I was able to get past Bowser If he jumps forwards, I can run under him most of the time I can squeeze through a gap in the hammers or even I can go right through the hammers because he throws so many that the game can't assign hitboxes to all of them But no, I got terrible luck so many times <laughs> and finally on the fourth time to Bowser We made it through and we got 1859 Point eight five six. The first run ever to have an 18 on the front. Before this, it was always 19-something. Even, like, uh, since 2007, it's been 19-something. Andrew G got, like, 1957 back then. And then, when I started running this game, the world record was 1940. And, like, 10 months after I started running it or something, I got 1934, 35. Um, and just kept playing from there. Here we are in the past, like, seven years since I've been running this game. The world record's come down over 40 seconds, so that's pretty cool. And I'm glad to have been the one to take it under 19 minutes. But wait, there's more. That's not the end. There's more time to save. Even though this run, I know, it looks flawless. But there is this one blemish of the run, right? Only one. We you can save time here, and then that's it. Like, you can save, like, the 0.3 I lost here, and that's it. No, not true. You can save about 0.3 by not bonking here. But now we're going to go over the other places you can save time in this run. We're not going to stop at 1859. I'm not going to stop at 1858, probably, either. I might stop at 1857, but depending on how long it takes me to get it, I might keep going past that. We might be... Keep going for 1856. I probably won't go past that. I might not even go for that, but <laughs> um, let me explain how that might be doable. So, if you don't get hit, if you don't hit this pipe here, that's like 0.3 I lost or something. Every frame counts in 84 because timing stops as soon as you hit the X right here. So we don't worry about frame rules or whatever in 84. It's just like every frame you can save by like jumping backwards in the third room and crazy stuff like that. You want to do that because every frame counts here. But where can we save some time outside of 8.4? There's like 0 0.3 or 0 0.4 to save in 8.4. How about outside of it? So for one, there's crazy Bowser kills like these that you can do on pretty much all the other Bowsers. The problem is you need like specific patterns to be able to pull them off, and they're hard to execute. 
So it's hard to find like a route through the game where doing all of the fastest strats will give you all of the best patterns as well, if that makes sense. So maybe some more research will help like find the best route through the game where you just get all the best patterns because that makes it significantly easier to get all the frame rules. But it would be pretty annoying if we had ended up having to wait on the title screen for like 40 seconds to get the best route through the game, you know? <laughs> I probably wouldn't end up doing that, but... Uh, I did explain, here's one place you can say 0.35 seconds, grab this flag. Um, right when it changes from 6 to 5. I already do that in some of my runs. One of my previous world records did that. Uh, I didn't do it in this run because I was already going really fast at that point. So I've already explained that. I think I already explained 7-4, the fast kill. Let's go to the beginning. We already did flagpole glitch on 1-4. You can do it on the other <laughs> 23 flagpoles in the game. But that's stupid. That's like five frame perfect inputs each time, plus whatever. Like this level, you don't need to do any additional set setup to get your sub pixels lined up to make flagpole glitch possible. But um, in other levels, you do. Like in eight three, for example, how are you just gonna run through the level and like have your sub pixels be good when you need to slow down to avoid fireworks? In any percent, you can see the flag glitch for this level. You like buffer a jump at the start, and then somewhere during the level, you have to release right for either two or three frames, basically. And it's like, you're just not gonna, you have to do that. Release right for two or three frames, and then get to the final stairs, and land on this specific pixel of the steps, and then do like five frame perfect inputs. And it's like, you're not gonna do that on every level. Like, maybe you can do it on 1-1, one, one. maybe you can do it on, like, 2-3, maybe you can do it on 4-1, but, like, the more you add in, it just gets absurd. So, like, it's possible. Human sum of best can be, like, 10 seconds faster or something. Like, you can make some theory test that's, like, way fast, but no one's, no one's doing flag publish on, like, every level, right? But, things people could do... Well, let's go over one more thing that people can maybe do, but I don't really know. Um, this fire flower grab. There's actually something you can do in this game where if you aren't holding jump when you grab a power up, you can buffer a jump. Like you start holding jump during this animation and then they'll jump out of the animation. If you grab this flower with like a ton of speed then you can buffer a jump and make it over the gap. And that saves just enough time to save a frame rule in this level. Um, it's really hard. Uh, I, maybe you can get good enough to do that with some amount of consistency. I don't know if I'd ever go for that in runs, but maybe you could. That's like some 1854 stuff. Um, outside of that... 2-3 flagpole glitch is a good candidate if you want to add more flagpole glitches in. 2-4 Bowser, you'd need like... If you get a specific pattern, which this actually is a good pattern for it, you want to get these two shots in, and then you wait for him to drop a little bit, and then you just shoot two more and run ahead and barely save another frame rule. Those two shots like have to do double damage to him, like we explained earlier, and it's like... It's hard to pull all those off, and you're barely saving the frame rule, so like... You could save one there. Same thing with 3-4. Um, the problem is, like, if you save that 2-4 frame rule, because I got a pattern you could potentially do it on, then you're going to get different patterns through the rest of the game, and they're worse, and it's like, it's like so complicated to try and find this route through the game where you get all the good patterns, but maybe we can figure it out and open the path to 1854 and beyond or whatever. 4-1 flagpole glitch, that's a good level f to do flagpole glitch on. Maybe you can do it there, but the more you add in, it gets really hard. This level, I do this clip just fine. But this Bowser kill, you can. this is one of the easiest levels to improve compared to this run. Um, you can see I like kind of 
slowed down a lot right here before going ahead to kill Bowser. If you get like five really fast fireballs in on him, or your opening shots right here actually hit and they don't get blocked by this unlucky fireball. I did say like multiple times throughout the run, like, oh, I know what patterns I'm gonna get. But sometimes that's not the case. Like 8-4 Bowser, for example, his pattern changes every frame. I can't play that whole level exactly the same every time. So it's gonna basically be random what pattern I get. Same here. Uh, you, you do that clip earlier in the level, you have to like crouch under this fire bar right here. Go Mario, go. You have to crouch under this fire bar. So you're like not really gonna arrive at this Bowser at the same frame every time. But I do specifically get here on a frame rule where he jumps backwards. Like, even if I very slightly, he'll jump backwards every time, but his fireballs aren't the same. They'll block my shots. Anyway, pretty long-winded, but you get a faster Bowser kill, you can save a frame rule there. <laughs> get like a mid or high 351. Moral of the story. World 5... Probably not gonna save any frame rules. You can get a faster Bowser kill, but like, it's it's hard with this Potaboo there and stuff. Basically what you would do in 2-4. Um, technically there's a setup for like 6-2 Flagpole Glitch, but it's pretty stupid. 6-3, I talked about this earlier. You can save time here. And that faster 4-4 Bowser kill and this 6-3 kill, or not kill. <laughs> this 6-3 frame rule and 4-4. Those are the next two things I'm including in the run. I already did them sometimes in my runs. Like, sometimes I would get the opening shots on 4-4 Bowser and then save the frame rule. I didn't in this one, but like, I already do that sometimes. That's not really anything new. Also, if I ever needed to make up some time, or even like I said, I needed to do that in one of my previous runs, 19 flat 0.6, um, I got this frame rule in that run. So this isn't anything new either. The things I need to get to get 1858, they're nothing new. I already do them. So all I have to do is do this run, get the faster 4-4 Bowser kill, get the 6-3 frame rule, and then not bonk in 8-4 right here. And then that's what 1858 is. Seems pretty reasonable, right? Past that, if you want to get 1857, you're basically looking to do one of the things I've mentioned up to this point, like an extra flagpole glitch, an extra fast Bowser kill, maybe the 7-4 really fast Bowser kill. And then you're gonna come to 8-2 <laughs> and you're gonna do bullet bill glitch, which is really stupid and let me explain why. Uh, you see how this bullet shoots here? You need a bullet to shoot out of the bottom we manipulate all sorts of patterns in this game. That's not the problem. We can we can get a bullet bill to shoot out of the bottom here. The reason this is stupid, um, for those who don't know what bullet bill glitch is, uh, you want this bullet bill, when you're about like right here, you wanna see a bullet bill shoot out of the bottom. You come, you wait on this step. When the bullet bill gets to like right here, you jump, you jump, you fall down to the flagpole, the bullet bill's like riding along the floor. You bounce off the, the bullet bill into the flagpole and like, it instantly triggers the countdown. You don't have to watch Mario go down the flagpole or walk to the castle. It's like you skip all of that. It's like you're right here immediately. You don't like warp there. Um, basically, Mario like disappears behind the castle right here because he runs into a solid block. Like this block right here in the castle is solid. And so once he runs into that, that's how the game knows. Okay, trigger the countdown. Um, when you do bullet bill glitch, it basically, like you start running into this block after grabbing the flagpole instead of this block. So you skip all of the flagpole and walking. But because you have to wait for the bullet bill to come for a little while, it ends up saving 0.7 seconds instead of like the full duration of these animations. But 0.7 seconds, that'll get us pretty much to 1857 from 1858, right? The problem is, <laughs> the way this game works is it actually only checks to see if you are colliding with an enemy every other frame. And that's kind of annoying, but actually if it wasn't programmed that way, bullet bill glitch would be impossible. 
what you have to do is like you, you're jumping down at this bullet bill right here and you have to actually pass through the bullet bill's hitbox for a frame and then bounce on the bullet bill so you can be low enough when you bounce on it so basically you're playing like 17 whatever minutes of 1857 pace run and then you go for the bullet bill glitch which itself is like a frame perfect jump but you're just like praying that you land on this 50 50 like coin toss sort of situation where you pass through the bullet bill for a frame and you could do that like over and over you could get rounds over and over to <laughs> 8-2 on 1857 pace and execute the glitch perfectly but just not get it <laughs> because you don't land on the bullet bill on the right frame thanks Kriller for gifting us a sub so yeah that's pretty much the path to 1857. It's like, add the 6-3 frame rule, add the 4-4 frame rule, add another frame rule of your choice. I haven't decided what's easiest yet. Maybe a faster Bowser kill, maybe one more flagpole glitch. And then do bullet bug glitch and like, bless RNG your way into a good bullet bill bounce. <laughs> but, uh, it might be kind of stupid. We might be frustrated if, if we, if we end up trying that and we just repeatedly lose the coin toss, then I don't know. <laughs> and just imagine, once you finally execute that perfectly, you're here on 884 on 1857 pace, you still enter this room. You gotta do this frame perfect jump to not bonk on the pipe. You gotta do the wall jump. <laughs> Then you have to, you want to do this turn around room like optimally and not scroll the screen too far. You got to not get hit by Bowser at the end. There's like a lot going on, but it's possible. <laughs> we might get there. I think I'll actually get 1858 pretty shortly because like I said, the things I need to do to get it are things I'm already doing. I've just been unfortunate with Bowser for a really long time. So yeah. We'll get 1858 pretty soon, I'm confident. Then we'll start messing with bullet bill glitch. If it gets too stupid, we might move on to something else. But we might also get 1857. And then past that, it just gets more and more absurd going for Like, if, you, if your chances of completing a run are 1%, and then you add in a trick that you get 30% of the time, your chances of, compl of completing the run are 0.3%. Then add in another trick that your chances are like 0.1% of or 1% of, sorry, 10% of getting, and then, yeah, it just, it's, your chances of completing the run shrink very quickly. So yeah, that's like the future of this run. Do more crazy Bowser kills and flagpole glitches. <laughs> that's pretty much what it boils down to. And I have an 1854 that I spliced together just as a demonstration so you could see what an 1854 would look like. I think humans will probably be able to pull that off someday. Like, that has four flagpole glitches, bullet bill glitch, and all the crazy Bowser kills in it. Maybe people get to that point someday. Maybe they go beyond that. Who am I to say, but... It's like, it's possible. The potential's there. We're not running out of options or ways to improve this game. It's not, like, so optimized that it's dead and there's nowhere to save time, but... We're only like our own limit as to what a human can pull off. And if the game will let us have a little bit of luck. But that's it. That's my warpless commentary slash analysis, breakdown, explanation, whatever you want to call it. Hope you learned some things. Hope it was entertaining. Sorry we had tech issues in the middle. That was really annoying. And I'm going to upload this to YouTube and people are going to be watching like five minutes of me fiddling around trying to make it work. But, sorry, uh, it wasn't my fault. There you have it. We did it. We did it. We did the 1859. We did the commentary. We did it. 